department per se. Uh, I think many people are here because they're on, under that aspect that they wanted to know whether or not we're going ahead with a private police force here or whether we're going to stay where we are. Not that we're voting on ordinances for the police commission. Uh, maybe somebody can clarify that? Sure, sir. Uh, what we're doing tonight is, is in, in what potentially this board will vote on at some point, whether it's tonight or in the future, is this ordinance that's being proposed. And the ordinance establishes a police commission whose duty will be to um, get the policy and procedures manual in order, uh, finalize an agreement with Waterford that's already been kind of penciled in, um, and any other necessary items that have already been listed required to go independent. That would include hiring a police chief. Um, once everything has been in, put in order, and that might take no less than three or four months, maybe even a year, I don't think it would take that long to find a, a police chief. There, there's ways to get that done. Um, then we would give the state a 30-day notice, and on that 30th day or on the 31st day, I guess it would be, we flick the switch and our police chief is sworn in as the first chief of the force. The 22 employees that we have right now that are considered constables become police officers of the East Line Police Department. Okay. Qu question maybe at the end is what are we gaining by transferring from where we are to where we're going? Okay. And I don't want to, I mean, it's, some of that's subjective. Um, and so, and I, um, um, but I've put my beliefs on the table as a leader of the town, and after already spending a year looking at the facts, determined that this is where to go, the pros and the cons. I don't think we lose anything. What we gain is accountability, a leader in town, whether he or she lives in this town or not, and that could be determined. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to. I'll put that opinion out later. Um, uh, we don't want to limit our search, is what I want, want to say, is we want to make sure we get the best person, nationwide search, to the job. But what we gain is accountability, someone who's going to be responsible for the budget, someone who has vision for the force, someone who stays longer than three years. I think the average tenure of the resident state trooper has been about three years. Um, uh, Sergeant Babcock worked for 17 of them. Was that the number I heard? Something yes. like that. We need that continuity. We need someone who's going to create great officers from these young guys that are coming in Why and have buy-in. Why couldn't we buy keep them? Why couldn't we ever keep this? Because the system of the state resident state trooper is such that they move through. They don't work for us. They okay. work for their force and their forces if they want to if they want to uh, attain another rank they have to move on and, okay. and go to another barracks. can we provide what they provide us now at a reasonable cost I think we can provide better better value to the citizens of this town okay. at the same cost very good okay okay thank you thank you for coming this evening Well, Mr. Cornelius, like I said, if there's anyone else first, Terry. And then we'll have some repeats up, okay, if anyone wants to add something to the conversation. Uh, Terrence Donovan, 25 Woodridge Road. As you guys know, I also serve on a board here in the town of East Line. Um, I was at the last town meeting, and Sergeant Masek did present partially what he's going through. I think there's no need, I mean, there's no question that we do need a full-time police force. But what I think that you have to extend to the public, I mean, out of the thousands that are in this town, 50 or so in here and a few of them watching on TV, is the overall costs. You're saying the 212000 or whatever Correct. it may be will cover that. Mm -hmm. But yes, but he also mentioned, you know, we need another dispatch, another half dispatcher, we need administration and all that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to need equipment. And I understand that we're going to be open for grants, you know, being uh, separated from the state police. But... I think the board should really think about this before you make a vote. I mean, think really hard and get it out to the public on what it's going to cost the town. Not just right now, but over the past several years. Yes, we are going to need a building. That's understandably so. But make sure that everyone knows this, you know. And I also, you know, I agree with you in extending the board and with a lot of people here, I also agree with this should be elected other than appointed or mix it up. But. I just think that you need to convey to our townspeople what it's going to cost over the next several years, decade, or whatever it may be. 
Because sit on a board, you know, we make a vote, and half the townspeople don't realize what it was, and they come to us and they complain. And, it, you know, I said the same thing's going to happen here, and they're going to do their complaining. So I ask you, please make sure that the public knows what we're going into. I mean, the officers, yes, I mean, they're great. We do need an independent police force. Just please make sure that everybody knows the financial liability that the town is going to incur. It would be okay if I, by this commission if I answer his statement with the details right now? I think it's appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Since so many people have brought up the cost, let me bring up, let me, let me list the cost for you. Uh, insurance, there will be no liability increase or P&C costs to the, insur to the police department. And that was an important issue that came up at the last meeting, whether we're under state police control or, or chief control. Uh, the cost of insurance, liability, property and casualty insurance will be the same. Uh, the cost to uh, house uh, prisoners in Waterford, the use of their jail, the large evidence locker, and, um, and that kind of stuff, the care of the prisoners. We're estimating on the high side of 40000 We really we were th really thinking we can negotiate that uh, based on the numbers to $25,000 and maybe lower based on a per diem. But we're using forty. We're using the very highest it could be. That's if we brought everybody we ever pulled over over to their jails, it'd be forty thousand. Police chief between ninety and one hundred and five thousand dollars for a police chief. Uh, Ledger just hired theirs, I think one hundred and five. Um, we, we, we're very confident, based on from the Police Chiefs Association of Connecticut, that one hundred thousand dollars is the number. That's what I put in. Administrative secretary. We already have uh, one full time and one part time starting in January. We go. We take that part time and move it to a full time, which is an extra fifteen thousand dollars. And then that person, of course, would be a full timer, so he or she would re receive benefits. And the, the benefit package is about twenty thousand dollars these days. Recording secretary for commission meetings and their supplies. And this is estimated really high. Usually we give commission $3,000, but we know this commission is going to be meeting a lot. We gave them $6,000. Those items, that's normal operating costs, add up to $206,000. Again, I'll go through it again. $40,000 for Waterford costs, $100,000 for police chief, administrative secretary. Um, oh, police chief benefit package is $25,000. That would really be, depending on who we hire, they might not need the health insurance, might be, um, uh, depending on the situation, it would be eighteen dollars to $25,000. I went to the very max at $25,000. It could be as low as $18,000. Administrative secretary, uh, $15,000. Benefits to that secretary, $20,000. Recording secretary, $6,000. Uh, $206,000 it would be the total operating cost. We're currently, currently, we pay 212, and we think that cost is going to go uh, much higher in the future based on $2 billion the state is behind in paying bills in the next two years, a billion a year. Um, there's one time cost involved. Do we think dispatcher training? would be about $5,000 to make them all collect certified. The, the, the dispatchers now are going to run plates like you, like you see on TV. They're going to be helping with, they're going to be a police dispatcher instead of just a fire dispatcher. And we think $5,000, we think there's actually more money in the budget. We might not even have that cost um, to, to look for in our contingency budget. The, and here's a big one. And let's be clear on this. Our state police requirement we pay in arrears. We use their service and we pay it at the end. Okay, and I don't think that's the case for the benefit package. Um, and is that the case for the benefit package and the overtime? I think we pay as we go. Something like that. Overtime as you go. For the overtime, correct. Okay, but so we think if we wait until July 1st, we're going to have a $175,000 obligation to the state to get out of it. Or we pay and just stay with the, it, it is a one-time cost. It's going to have to be built into next year's budget. If we change to independence on July 1st, we'll pay two-thirds of that or 115000 If we switch on May 1st, about 146000 If we wait to the very end of the fiscal year, it be 175000 that's the bottom line. We had to, to pay. We have to pay. You know, we're using the services now. We didn't pay for it up front. They sent us a bill at the end. 
we have to pay to get out. So it's going to be one year where we're paying the chief and the state police. It's going to be crystal clear with that, okay? That's up front, and they'll be built into next year's line item. I know the Board of Selectmen's just as interested in the Board of Finance of keeping our taxes low. We work hard at that. But we also want to bring good value for our tax money, and I think we're going to get a good value with this independent police force. We have capital needs. There's a very few items here. The chief's going to need a car. He doesn't need the, the full get-up with the cage and the, the, uh, all, the, all the things that go on the dashboard and in the car and all the safety checks. A $30,000 car, uh, used car, would, would work and suffice, okay? Until we can run him through the vehicle ap appropriation process, vehicle acquisition <laughs> program, and we can, we'll, we'll upgrade to a, a decent car once we get rolling with this thing. But we can get him on the road for $30,000. We'll cover the first three, four, five years. And then, you know, we'll be buying police cars like we always do. Upgrades to the station. We haven't put any money into that building over there uh, for a long time. The money that we, we appropriated to put in that building didn't get spent, spent correctly, as I've heard from sources. We need $10,000 right now to just to secure the building. I'm not going to go into the details. It's not appropriate. We do a press here, and I know she'd be good to me and not print this. But there are some security issues at that building that need to be addressed yesterday. Okay? Secure doors, locking. I, I'm not going to go in. Stop me. Stop me. Okay? $10,000. Okay? $20,000 would be needed to develop a processing area, a cage. Really? I'm, Sorry, but the prisoners, that's all they get is a cage. Uh, a processing area for, to put someone in a, a cage, to do paperwork, to issue a summons or whatever the police do. I'm not a police officer. I don't get the lingo. Uh, but they can bring someone in, process them, and release them without locking them up overnight and bringing them to court and all that. That can be done in-house. We have space for that. It's been identified. And we can do that and create that space for about $20,000. So $30,000 total for upgrades to the station. And that can be put into capital, um, our capital plan. We can also create within that $30,000 storage and evidence lockup and extra computers needed to go to this system, all for $30,000. We have computers in our car. In fact, we have two computers in each car. One's a state police computer. We have to buy those. And we have our own computer. We have two radios in each dash dashboard. We have two radios on each belt. We get rid of one radio on the belt, one radio in the car, one computer in the car as well. But the computer system we use needs an $8,000 upgrade to be independent. So we can run all the plates ourselves, and we can run all the background checks and prior arrests and warrants, outstanding warrants. How am I doing with all this lingo? Pretty good? Okay, just pretty good is all I need. Um, and, and Masick will come up here during the regular meeting, and he'll give you the full-on details, okay? But I want, listen, we're in public hearing. You want to make comments on what I'm telling you. Uh, let me get it out front, front right now. You can come challenge me on the numbers. Um, vehicle upgrade, computer upgrade, $8,000. So the total is $68,000 capital needs. We have to pay the state police $150,000 if we stay in the state police for a radio upgrade that has been delayed admittingly, okay? It was supposed to be like a year ago. It's not gonna happen this year. It got defunded. They haven't, they screwed, no. The plan for the antennas are, are not quite right in the, in the bouncing of the signals. But at some point, if we stay in the state police system, we're going to be required to upgrade our radios to this new system. And it's a $150,000 purchase of today's money. Now go out 3% interest uh, uh, inflation. And if it happens in three years, it happens in four years. That's going to come down the road. That's a fact. They're building the system now. So it's $150,000 savings, it's $68,000 to pay to take an independent force out there. I'd like to put no more money into that building. Yes, we're going to need to build a new building. I said it right up front. Independent or state police, we need a better, more professional building. 
Um, uh, that's a, it's an ideal retail spot there if we go out and build a building. There's also a couple opportunities coming up in the next five years this town might be able to take advantage of to put the police force in another location uh, or we build a building. I'll tell you right now, Ledger just built their building for $4.5 million. $4.5 million. Go over there and look at it. They'll give you a quick, you know, five-cent nickel tour. Um, it's a beautiful facility. Montville, $6.8 million. They built it a couple of years ago. It's huge. It's huge. It's twice, well, of course, they failed at their independence, but that's a long story and a very political story. Um, they, they have a very big building. It's also a town meeting center. It's also the dispatch. It's also a whole host of other things for public safety. And they built it for 6.8. There's no, we're not going to be getting into the 13 million range and all those inflated dollars. It's not a $15 million building or $20 million building um, unless we start, you know, adding to it. And we don't need to. We have a lot of needs in this town. We have schools to build. Um, and, and we do have a police station to build. I'll put that right up front. We're not doing this so we can get our station. We need a station, okay? So even money operations. We're going to need to kick in some money for to buy out the, the state police and for, for some dispatcher training. We have $68 million of capital, $68,000 of capital that we need to pay to enhance the building, 10 of which should have been done yesterday. Oh, heck, should have been done years ago. Uh, $20,000, which will allow us to do the business of independent force. It will also keep our, let's, our police officers can stay in town instead of running up to Montville and then waiting around a whole long time for the state police officer to allow them to leave. Um, um, and, and we'll be getting out of the state police radio budget. Darlene, um, could you just make 20 copies just so we could, or maybe Anna could make it while you're taking notes. Would you mind? Thank you. If we, if we turn 25 copies, we could spread it around. You can pass it among yourselves. So you have it in writing, have it in paper. Some people could take it home. Um, I apologize that, um, you know, again, this is not an appropriation. This is an ordinance. We're just changing the leadership. There is some cost involved, but um, it could be swallowed up with some of our current dollars and put into next year's operating funds uh, for those one-time costs. And then, then it's even money. Zero cost neutral. Other comments? Sir. Joe Ayers from 74 Chesterfield Road. Uh, I agree with the need for the independent force. And I certainly agree with the need for having an elected commission. Maybe a combination in the beginning that needs to head that way. But my concern money-wise is we're not just going to have, I don't believe, a chief and sergeants. There's going to be perhaps a deputy, maybe a captain, one or two lieutenants. Not the cost of their increase in salaries, but the backfill. You're going to need patrol officers to fill behind them. I would believe you're not going to take a senior official and have them on the road at a captain or lieutenant level. Have you thought about how no, you're going to handle that? There's no plan to add extra layers of management. We have a manager now. He wears a state police officer uniform. We're going to put a chief in. Um, uh, it's the sergeants are supervisors. They get paid a stipend. They get paid significant money from regular police officers to be leaders, to be managers. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's not a lot, but it's East Lime. Uh, we're not in, in our police plan. Someday, this town may grow. Someday, you know, frankly, that we do need to you know, uh, look at the number of officers we have on in this town that, that balloons up. Um, but that's not the decision tonight, and that's not the decision that this board needs to make. It will be a com police commission. It will come down the line. We have grown our force over the years. I don't know that we've kept up, frankly. Um, I, I, um, I look at other towns who have um, at least 10 more officers within their ranks than we do, same size town or even less. Um, I don't need to necessarily go in that. That will have to happen someday. We as a community have to, have to 
decide what kind of a force we want. Do we want to go out on every call? Stonington will go out on every call. Cat stuck in a tree. um, Elderly lady locked herself out of the house. Um, Someone needs directions. They'll go out on every call, period. Um, it, it, you know, so. Well, that may not be practical. Just right. an observation. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate it, I, and I didn't mean to lecture to you. No. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the plan today is not to add lieutenants, captains, deputies, or anything else. We're going to s- keep the same uh, management style. I believe in an earlier in a last week's meeting that we were presented with information that did call for that, that did call for a dep- uh, lieutenant and additional structure. I don't see it here right we now. We talked about it. In, the sergeant, in, the sergeant has something to add to that. Yeah. You bet. I, um, I, I, sure. Um, I, I, maybe we should. Well, do you want to talk to that right now? Yeah, Our plan is not to hire a no, lieutenant right now. Point, I'll, I'll sure. Uh, sergeant Michael Masick, East Line Police. Uh, currently, so it would be to replace a resident trooper that's current with the chief. Uh, our current structure now, we have an administrative sergeant position that is not considered part of minimum manning as the officers who are out on the road, uh, the patrolman and the sergeant who does supervise. In our uh, current contract, we do have language to bring in a lieutenant position that would be in lieu of the current uh, administrative sergeant position. So yes, you would have a second command. He would be under union, but that, that is already there. So it's not like we'd be bringing outside body back in to supplement or replace him because currently as we do operate, they are not considered part of minimum manning. So it won't, it won't affect uh, daily operation. Hopefully that does clarify. Uh, the only reason we don't have one right now is that it just has not been uh, negotiated into the contract. Language is set up to have that position, just not the job description and or uh, a pay scale, per se. There was talk, Mrs. Hardy, of um, lieutenants and such, and, and I think we mis, uh, didn't misrepresent ourselves. I think we got ahead of ourselves. I think we talked about the, the structure of what could be someday and what might be someday, again, as the town grows. It's not a decision that this board will make about what we're going to do about lieutenants, and it will be something that the police commission will make down the road. The, uh, well, um, sure, and then Mr. Cornelius can get out back up there as well. Thank you. Could you Lisa Picarazzi, 14 Oak Hill Drive. Could you just explain the forty thousand dollar cost for Waterford? I'm not. I just don't understand why that would be a different charge. Like, how are we operating now that we don't have the charge? Thanks. Well, what what we use when we pull over someone, and they 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 need to be locked up and maybe make bail or maybe taken to court the next morning. We need a jail, a proper jail. There's all sorts of liability and requirements and, and, and the thing, requirements on that. We don't have a jail with bars and all the things. So we would need to take them to a proper jail. We're actually working with. Um, our prison uh, that we, 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 we the now. prisoners now go to the state barracks beca- oh. within our state <laughs> system. So every time we pull over someone that needs to do that, and that's that's uh, many times a year we have to go up to Montville. That's part of the two twelve too. So. And that's part of the price of the two twelve. Um, there you go. So, and there, you Mr. Know, and there are some soft costs in here. Um, they're not going to be in this. That the cost of driving up to Montville. 12 miles compared to four to Waterford is a cost, a tax on officers' time and gas and everything like that. But that's putting, not even in putting an officer right. back on the street, right. you know, in an hour instead of in three hours and, and all that. Yeah, um, Mr. Cornelius, I, I sat you down. I'll set you up. Uh, two quick things: uh, Has there been a study of other towns that have gone through the same transition? Um, and I I don't need for you to answer that right now. Um, But my second uh, point was that I did speak to a resident who is a state trooper, um, and he was in favor of an independent force for various reasons that I won't divulge. But would uh, Trooper Siri like to comment on his, where the the two hats, and as a taxpayer and a trooper, would you like to comment on that? Retired trooper. So, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, then, then I, re- I request that you okay. do answer. Um, that's a really good question. Uh, I've lived in town since 1984, but for 22 and a half years, I served as a resident state trooper in Salem. 
Salem is exactly what the resident trooper program is designed for. It's a perfect sit up, setup. Uh, I was in town a long time. I knew everybody in town, which is the best thing and the worst thing about being in town for so long. In that situation, it's a great value for the town because if a trooper gets hurt, sick, or a car gets banged up, the state takes care of replacing that. And the cost is known going up front. Um, and I think in East Lyme's case, when if you go back to the days of Mr. Delora and the early uh, part-timers and so forth, uh, it was a perfect setup, but it's grown too big for a resident trooper program. You need your ultimate supervision, I think, here on a regular basis. I think the state police still has some fantastic leaders at every level. Uh, I just retired like a little over a year ago, and I, if I had to do it all over again, I would. It was a great uh, experience for me. But I think where we are right now, considering the talent we have in town, uh, it's the right thing to do. Uh, people want to know when they call, they're, they're going to get a response. Uh, reports now take several months to get sometimes. And here again, that's just because of the backlog of the state. It's no intent by the state's uh, state police. It's just that they're so backlogged. Here you can go down, get a report. For most cases, if it's a, here again, there's some cases you can't get. If it's a case open and still under investigation, you can't get it. Names are redacted out, but you'll be able to pick up a copy right in town here. And here again, that's a little bit of revenue too. We can charge for people to get that. Uh, as I think Sergeant Masick will talk about a little bit. It's not a big revenue source, but you do get compensated for it. I think you're, deser you're giving a better product to the town. Um, if we have an incident right now, a serious incident tonight, resident trooper will probably be here, but you're going to get a supervisor from the troop as well. If it happens in town under your own police department, your chief will be here. And you don't have to worry about compensating him. That's part of his job. At his rate, uh, when they get paid, they're paid to... Uh, they're on call all the time. And if he's not here, you'll have a designated uh, number two person to do it. So I think it's a really good time to, to do it. I, you know, I, you know, Bruce says a dinosaur. Well, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm right alongside him. Obviously, I'm one of the shorter ones. I mean, Bruce is more of the T-Rex. I'm more of the, I don't know, uh, tri Triceratops yeah. or something like that, <laughs> something like that. But, uh, uh, but we've got some fantastic people here. You look at... Uh, all the things, uh, Mark Cuomo and Jean, I think they're two of the best detectives anywhere on the eastern side of the state, in, in the entire state. Their, their solve rates are fantastic. Uh, Mark reaches out to the community. He has these uh, applications on cell phones for people to contact him. We're ready to make this move, and we're going to provide a better product to the residents of the town. And I still love the state police, too. I mean, it was a great marriage for a long time. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. That's you walk that delicate line very well. Yes, sir. How are you? Yeah, I know. Nobody wants to go to the microphone, but we have to. Oh, good. All right. Um, David Treader, 21 Brainerd Road. I do. I, like Mr. Siri, am a trooper and a resident trooper and a member of this town and uh, born and raised, educated here. Wholeheartedly support this decision to go to an independent. They're professional dependable and uh, they should have done it years ago um, my issue is stop with this cost neutral stuff it's not it's not cost neutral it's it's not even close I I'm okay with it we're good but two hundred thousand dollars I don't know my math is bad but that's not two hundred thousand dollars is it you know um, mm -hmm. yeah you know it, it Address the issue. You're giving them a chief. They're going to need a hierarchy. It may not be when they get a chief, but they're going to need a hierarchy. They deserve a hierarchy. You're going to need a second. When the chief's gone, who's the second? You're going to have to pay him. Okay? They're going to need a, a department, a police station. It has to be done. So why is that not, why is it $200,000, it's cost neutral? It's an issue that's going to have to be addressed, and it's a big issue. So as a taxpayer and someone who's not going anywhere soon, I'd like to see that addressed. Stop saying this is cost neutral. That's about it for me. Okay. Any other comments? Pat? Pat 
Kyle Arp at 14 Oak Hill Drive. I'd just like the, the comments that I made about a resident. I'm not against going to a nationwide search, but when they're selected, they should be required to move to our town after selection and live in our town and be a part of our town. Understand. Any other comments? Any other comments? There's, um, any other comments? Do we, do we take a motion to close the public hearing? Mm -hmm. yes. That's what we do. So I move. Yeah. Second. There's been a second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed to close the public aye. hearing? Any abstain? Okay, the public hearing is closed. We'll move to the res We're going to move to the regular meeting in about five minutes. We'll take a break. I, Costello's, uh, Dino from Costello's was here. He, went, he came back with pizza. Um, so there's a pizza in the lobby for those that didn't get dinner. And we're going to reconvene in about five minutes. Wow.